work from here at Connect all over the world. Without internet, I do not have business. Simple like that. Our O3B Empower system will be operational soon. And it's a perfect example of SES's purpose, doing the extraordinary in space to deliver amazing experiences everywhere on Earth. On your screen is a live view of our Falcon 9 vehicle. This two-stage Falcon 9 stands about 229 feet tall, or slightly taller than the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy. When it's fully fueled, it'll hold just over a million pounds of propellant that the vehicle will burn through in less than three minutes after liftoff. And we began loading those propellants on both stages of the vehicle at T minus 35 minutes. Now, starting from the top of the rocket, our payload today is safely enclosed inside of that 17 foot diameter payload fairing. And that's that large tru structure you see at the top of the rocket. Made of a carbon composite material, the fairing protects satellites on their way to orbit and the fairing is jettisoned approximately three minutes into flight. For today's mission, we do have two spacecraft on the second stage and inside the fairing. Each payload will deploy at separate times, about six minutes apart from each other. And the fairing halves supporting today's mission are flight proven. One half is flying for the eighth time today and the other half is flying for its ninth time. M1D, chill. Below the payload fairing, we have the second stage that will take the O3B M-Power payload to space. The second stage will ignite its single Merlin vacuum, or MVAC, engine about two and a half minutes into flight, and then it will relight for a second and a third time before deploying the two satellites. The Empower payload on board the second stage today will be going to MEO, or medium Earth orbit. You might have heard us previously refer to different orbits such as LEO or GEO, but today's payloads are going to MEO, or medium Earth orbit. MEO is located at about 8,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, and as the name suggests, it's an Earth-centered orbit. MEO's optimal orbital position powers the capabilities of SES's next-generation communication system, O3B Empower, which is working towards the goal of global reach of 96% of the world's population, with as few as six total satellites. Is one fuel load complete? And below that second stage, we do have the inner stage, which is part of the first stage. As you can see on your screen, the carbon fiber interstage is a distinct black color, and that's because it's unpainted TPS, or thermal protection system. And this protects the composite material that the interstage is made of. At the bottom of the first stage, there are nine Merlin engines that will get Falcon 9 off the ground and up to the thinner parts of the Earth's atmosphere. And shortly after liftoff, the first and second stages will separate from one another, and then the second stage will continue to orbit, while the first stage will start making its way back down to Earth. The first stage is designed to be reflown with minimal refurbishment between flights. Today's booster is flying for the ninth time and will be attempting to land on our drone ship, a shortfall of gravitas, which you can see on your screen now. And if we're successful in recovering the booster on screen, this will mark the 245th successful recovery of an orbital class rocket. And lastly, that large truss structure you see there is the transporter erector or TE. We use it to roll the rocket out to the pad and raise it to its vertical launch position. The TE also routes the vehicle's fluids, power, and telemetry umbilicals from the ground systems to the rocket and satellites. And this is until Falcon 9 goes on internal power and clears the pad. At liftoff, the TE will retract in order to clear the way for F9's ascent. Before the TE is able to retract, we will see the clamp arms opening around the second stage, and then the TE will begin to pull away from the vehicle just slightly. At T0, ground hydraulic systems will pull the TE even further away from Falcon 9 as it lifts off. Strongback retract has started. We just heard the call out for the beginning of the strongback retraction. You should be able to see it leaning away from the vehicle shortly. The first stage is connected to a launch mount at the base of the TE, but the structure is hinged and it will retract away from the vehicle in preparation for launch. You might also hear the TE referred to as the strong back by the launch team. You can see under the fairing, those clamp arms are now completely open. And the strong back will begin to lean away from the vehicle. At this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with one million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Both first stage and second stage should finish loading propellant just about a minute apart from each other. First stage should be wrapping up at T minus three minutes and second stage around T minus two minutes. 
And those white clouds you see around the vehicle is the chilled gas above the LOX tank liquid surface, and we vent that overboard to maintain pressure in the tank as needed. And when that gas contacts the Florida air, the, uh, the air condenses and forms clouds and water that you see there on your screen. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup. This means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. And just inside of T minus two seconds, we will light the nine Merlin 1D engines for liftoff. Stage one locks load is complete. And there we go, we just heard that stage load, stage one has wrapped up its locks loading. SCS's O3B M power payload continues to be healthy, and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. Weather is clear so far for today's launch, and the range is reporting no issues blocking our launch today. Should be coming up on the completion of locks loading on the second stage in around 10 seconds. Stage two locks load is complete. And there we go, our vehicle is now fully loaded with fuel and liquid oxygen. It's also worth noting that we do plan to end our webcast early today since the large side of the payload adapter will, uh, will block any camera views of payload deployment. And so live coverage will end after first stage landing and a successful shutdown of our MVAC engine's first burn. For those of you following along though, be sure to check our social accounts for confirmation of deploy, and that should happen near the T plus two hour mark. Again, you can see some of those white clouds venting from the TE locks line. Gas close up. This is a completely normal part of the closeout process. Vehicles in startup. And there we go, Falcon 9 is in startup. The vehicle's internal flight computers have now taken control of the launch countdown. Launch director on countdown. Go for launch. And with the final go from our from our launch director, all systems are go for launch of Falcon 9 with the O3B M Power payload. You last 30 seconds and counting. Plus 35 seconds into launch, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying the O3B M power payload. Nominal power and telemetry. During ascent, we will tilt the nine Merlin 1D engines, and that will turn the rocket horizontally in what we call a gravity turn. Now we're still going up, but we're also heading horizontally away from the launch pad. Moments ago, we did throttle the engines down in preparation for max Q. Falcon Q, 9 is supersonic. Our maximum aerodynamic pressure. Max Q. The rocket typically needs to go about 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. So keep an eye on that stage one telemetry in the bottom left side of your screen. Now coming up in about a minute, we do have three events in quick succession. Those are Miko, or main engine cutoff, 
stage separation and SES-1. Amigos, when we shut down the nine Merlin 1D engines on the first stage, stage separation is when the first and second stages will physically separate from one another. And SES-1 is when we light that single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. Getting some great views from stage one here, looking down towards the Earth. You can see those nine Merlin 1D engines powering our way into orbit. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And vacuum ignition. Wow, amazing view there of stage separation and MVAC ignition as well as Miko from the ground. You're now getting a live view from our MVAC and stage one camera. We did just successfully cut off the nine Merlin 1D engines, separate the two stages, and light the MVAC engine. We're coming up on fairing separation in around 15 seconds. Bearing separation confirmed. Both vehicles are following nominal trajectories. And we did just heard we did just hear confirmation that we had successful fairing separation. We will be attempting to retrieve those halves today once they fall back to Earth using our recovery vessel Doug. We're now just about T plus three minutes and fifty seconds into today's mission. We are in the first of two planned MVAC burns for uh, prior to satellite deployment. At T plus six minutes and 30 seconds, you should see on your screen the first stage is entry burn. And for the entry burn, we do relight three Merlin 1D engines, and that's starting with the center E9 engine, followed shortly after that by the E1 and the E5 engines. And this, of course, slows the vehicle down as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We need to slow down to reduce the, uh, the re-entry forces, and that helps us recover and reuse the first stage. During that entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but we're still moving very rapidly. And that causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also sometimes called the rocket's plume, and this deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle's surface. And that soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses. Again, on the right side of your screen is a view of our Merlin vacuum engine. You can see in the telemetry in the bottom right, we are accelerating very rapidly towards orbit. And on the left, we have a great view of our first stage. You can see it's starting to accelerate now, heading back down towards the surface of the Earth. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. Great news there on the nets. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. Everything is looking great so far in this mission. Should be starting up the entry burn on the first stage in just around 30 seconds. Stage one entry burn startup. Stage one FTS saved. There's confirmation of the startup of the entry burn on the first stage. You can see in the telemetry on the bottom left side of your screen, we are now rapidly decelerating. And this burn should last around 20 seconds in total.
stage one entry burn shutdown. And there's confirmation of the shutdown of the entry burn. Reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, and that enables more investment in critical scientific research. The Falcon 9 first stage that is supporting today's mission has performed the entry burn for the ninth time today. And this booster has previously supported CRS-26, OneWeb Launch 16, Intelsat IS-40E, and five Starlink missions. Stage 2, terminal guidance. The Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level, and these achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent. And the MVAC engine on the second stage is optimized for about 220,000 pounds of thrust in a vacuum. And coming up next at around T plus 7 minutes and 50 seconds, we should be shutting down our MVAC engine on the second stage. Stage 2 FTS is saved. And that should be followed quickly by our landing burn on the first stage. Stage 1 transonic. Seco. There's confirmation of second engine cutoff 1. Just awaiting confirmation of a good orbital insertion. Nominal orbit insertion. There we go. Great news. We have inserted the stage into a nominal orbit. Again, we are coming up on the landing burn of the first stage. Stage one landing burn. There we go. We did just light up that central E9 engine. We're just waiting for Falcon 9 to land back on our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. Landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And there you have it, folks. That landing marks SpaceX's 245th recovery of an orbital class rocket. And that includes first stage landings for both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. While the mission isn't over just yet, the second stage does have two additional burns prior to payload deploy. Um, but since we don't have views of deploy due to the size of the payload adapter, we are going to end our mission coverage here. Deploy is scheduled around the T plus two hour mark, so be sure to check back in on our social accounts for confirmation of deploy. All of us here at SpaceX want to give a big thank you to our customer SES for entrusting us with today's mission. We also want to give a shout out to the Range and the Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's launch. This launch concludes our 282nd overall SpaceX mission to date and our 83rd launch just of this year. And of course, thank you to all of our viewers for tuning in and for your continued support. We will see you again soon.